The greatest investment you ever make is the investment in yourself. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. Today's episode was a pinch me moment for me. Definitely a career highlight. John Maxwell is on the show. He has been deemed the number one leadership expert in the world by Inc. Magazine. He has sold millions and millions of books, and he is legit. He's a legend on the topic of leadership. In speaking with John, he said, I'm known for my leadership, but my real passion is personal development. So you can believe we jumped right in there. John has a coaching company where he has certified 30,000 people to lead under the John Maxwell brand, under his philosophy and his template. So now people all over the globe are sharing what his message is, and they're sharing his view and tactics and curriculum. 30,000 people are doing this. It is the largest coaching business in the world. John shares his specific formula for making decisions, which I found fascinating. And we also get into topics like social media and building followers and what that means and following versus leading. So that was really interesting, especially coming from someone who's been at this for decades and decades prior to any social communication channels even existing. It's it's really interesting to get insight from John on this topic. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't lead anyone, where it all starts, according to John, is leading yourself. He says his greatest challenge as a leader is leading himself. And that's everyone's greatest challenge. You start with yourself. One of the initiatives John is working on with his team is focusing on other countries, too, and helping other countries. He's working with presidents of other countries to really help them with their leadership and applying his philosophy. I have pages of notes here, and I'm sure you will, too. So get ready. And here is John Maxwell. Are you ready for change? Or maybe you're already in a season of expansion. As we embrace this new decade, are you ready to take action on your own Why Not Now idea? Maybe that means starting the company, launching the podcast, writing the book, or doing more public speaking, injecting your why into what you are doing. At the end of the day, that is exactly what creates connection. And connections convert. My life work is to help guide women through this very stage in their life. I do this through the Renegade Brand Bootcamp. It truly is the career love of my life. The reason I love this program so much is because I'm able to create a mosaic, a collection of like-minded, like-hearted, driven women who come together to level up. They learn the renegade mentality directly from me, and I share everything I've learned over the past 20 years in business. 
It's equal parts education, collaboration, accountability, and community. We are accepting applications for our 2020 program. And you are welcome to go check everything out about the program at renegadebrandbootcamp.com. And as a very first step, just sign up for my five-day email series. I uncover all of the questions about the bootcamp and help you understand if it's right for you. We've had some incredible women come through the program, and you will hear from them as well. You can check out the curriculum, the structure, the vibe, and everything in between. Many years ago, I went to Mark Cuban and asked him for investment advice. I thought I was going to get some real estate or stock market type of advice. Instead, he said, invest in yourself. Invest in your own growth. Invest in yourself. Bet on yourself. This is the best ROI you will ever find. If you're at that point where you are ready to take action, head to renegadebrandbootcamp.com. We tackle the most taboo topics on the Why Not Now show. Oftentimes, you're hearing guests share things they've never shared before. In the spirit of things we don't typically talk about, you should know that the Why Not Now show is supported by Poopery, the original before-you-go toilet spray. It's magic. My friends at Poopery have literally taken the smell out of you-know-what. This pure blend of essential oils stops bathroom odor before it begins. Visit Poopery.com and Why Not Now listeners get 20% off with code Why Not Now. That's all one word. And you can hear the story about Poopery in our interview with founder Susie Batiste. That's Why Not Now, episode 28. Poopery is also available at Target. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to the show. And let's start where we always do in the spirit of Why Not Now. Can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you were navigating that delta between idea and action, dreaming and doing, and you had to ask yourself, why not now? Well, Amy Jo, first of all, great to be with you and I'm excited for you and your listeners that I can share today. I, I love the name of your podcast. And, and when you ask the question, uh, you know, there are literally dozens of times that I could share where I asked myself, okay, why not now? And, and had that decision to make, am I going to, am I going to sit or am I going to get in the arena of action? So the, the one I think I'll talk about for a moment here, uh, cause I think it's a great story and hopefully it'll help your listeners is happened to me. I, I'm 72. Okay. So when I was 64, I was approached by uh, Paul Martinelli and Scott Fay who started a coaching company. And, uh, Truthfully, uh, you know, I didn't need a coaching company. I'd, mm-hmm. I've been running this race for quite a while and doing well, and hey, sold a lot of books. and 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 I thought, you know, I'm I'm 64. I can pretty well have the rest of my life do whatever I want to do. And but I was in a conversation about a year before that with Jack Welch, who was the CEO of General Electric, and we were talking and and we were talking about legacy and. Uh, he said something that day that impacted me. He said, John, legacy has nothing to do with uh, a company or an organization. It has everything to do with people. That if your legacy is going to continue, it's because people carry it. And, and that really spoke to me. And so when they came to me, I mean, I'm 64. I, I could afford to quit, mm-hmm. retire. And, and they, they said, John, would you like to, uh, would you like to start a, a coaching company? Uh, it interested me because of legacy. I, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could – you know, credential people and help them, you know, uh, become entrepreneur and start their own organizations. And wouldn't it be wonderful if, if I could, you know, get some more legs to my legacy. And so I, I spent about uh, six months just talking to them and, and, and talking in my inner circle and, and, and kind of considering what this all meant. And what I knew it meant was that if, you know, if you start a company, uh, you're certainly not going to retire. You're not going to kind of lay back. And so I really gave, I gave it some thought and, uh, I decided that I decided to do it. I said, yeah, I, I really want to, uh, I think I've got a, another chapter in me. And so I think I, I want to do it. So we started, uh, uh, well, I guess it was nine years ago. Now we started an organization that, uh, 
wow. I mean, we, we didn't have any coaches. We, we, we had no money down. We just said, let's, let's tell people that I'll be glad to credential them and, uh, and, and they could be a John Maxwell certified, uh, coach. And so off we went and Amy, Joe, I can't, I mean, nine years later, we have over 30,000 coaches mm. in 160, 162 countries. We are the largest, most successful coaching company in the world. And the joy that I have received from this organization and from these people, it's just, it has no limits to it. And mm. I'm, I'm, living in, I'm living in my best days. I'm living in my <laughs> best days. And, awesome. and I think of myself, what, what, would hap- what would have happened if I wouldn't have asked myself, <laughs> why not now? What, what, would, mm-hmm. what, would, what would have happened if I had just said, you know what, I'm okay. I, you know, I, can, I, don't, I don't need to do any more work. And, and so let me just, just take, give me a couple more minutes because I was, I was having a conversation with uh, Tyler Perry and and he was talking about how that he had just finished building his fourth studio. You know, he, he's an actor, but he really loves directing and, and, and well, he loves all of it. And so he, he built a small studio in Atlanta, outgrew it, another one outgrew it, the third one that he thought he would never outgrow, and he outgrew it. And he said, John, I just worn out. I just kept building studios. And I thought, this is ridiculous. And so he said, I kind of thought, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop. Then he said, the longer I thought about it, the more I realized I still had some growth in me and I was still, I'm still kind of rising in the industry. And so he said, I, you know, I did the hard work and we built the fourth studio and we had, so we had this conversation about when do you quit? You know, I mean, mean, when's enough enough? It's Mm kind of like me. I'm, you know, I, I don't have to work anymore if I don't want to. And, and at the end of that, I said, Tyler, I said, here's, here's, here's what I think I get out of our conversation today. And he loved what I said. I said to him, and I say to you and all your listeners now, that when you can afford to quit, you can't afford to quit. Mm. Well, and uh, this is yeah. a, I, I, I love this. I love this. And here's why. Here's why. Because Tyler, has, he's building success upon success, and he's layering and compounding his, his influence. He's, he's, mm-hmm. everything's, everything's compounding. And so here he is at the height of his return in, in his work. And he's thinking about quitting. And, and, and if you quit, you never know what you lost because you didn't go there. So, but here's what I know what you lost. You lost the most that you could ever lose because you were at your highest peak. And so when you can afford to quit, you can't afford to quit. So I've been, you know, in fact, I'm getting ready. I'll I'll probably end up doing a book on it, but I'm teaching now a little bit about this. And what I'm telling people is, uh, if you're going to quit, Amy Joe, if you're going to quit, quit your first year because you haven't compounded anything. <laughs> you, you haven't lose. built anything yet. You, <laughs> yeah. hey, that's exactly right. Yeah. Hey, quit your first year, no big loss. But but if you quit on the top side, there's a huge loss there. So anyway, yeah, that's my why. Why not now? I I, I said, hey, I don't have to do this, but I want to do this, and I think maybe the greatest work we do is the work that we don't have to do, but we feel it's a a good work to do. And now, I mean, we have hundred, well, we have over a hundred coaches every week join us, join our company. And, uh, we certify them and, and, and speaking and leading and entrepreneurship and all that stuff. And, and, uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. And, and I'm in my best days, but if I would have looked then and I would have said, no, I, I'm not going to do it now. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I would have lost maybe the most important thing I've ever uh. done. Wow. That legacy. I mean, you've been paving that runway, it seems like, ever since that conversation with with Jack that sparked it. And what I'm so interested in, John, is the six months that you took to really make that decision and getting from the idea to the, the green light. What did that look like? You mentioned you spoke with your inner circle. You know, you thought about it. But tactically... How does that decision, that big of a decision, go down? Like if you were to give us a glimpse under the hood. Well, my first hesitation was I spent my whole life building a reputation that was pretty, pretty good. I thought, boy, if I start certifying coaches, mm-hmm. you know, well, they may go out and screw up. You know, they may, they, yeah. hey, they may, they may be goofballs. You know what yeah. I mean? And, it's your brand. And, and all of a sudden, I, I've got a, I've got a certified John Maxwell. <laughs> goofball coach out there. <laughs> uh-huh. And I thought, I thought, do I want to risk 
what I've worked so hard to, to get into a, what most people would call a very enviable position. And do I want to risk that to, and, and put it in the hands of others? And I, I, I had a lot of discussion that, I, that my inner, uh, inner circle discussion was a, a lot on that. Of, 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 is I'm making myself kind of vulnerable here. What, what do I do about this? And I came, what helped me to get over to the action side, because I love how your podcast, you're, you're helping people take action and, and, and move and, and, uh, you know, action gives you traction. So, so uh, what, what happened with me and Joe was I finally came to the conclusion that people knew me and I had, uh, built a good reputation and, uh, that if we really grew, there would be some goofballs out there. You, you can't have mm-hmm. 30,000 people and, and not have <laughs> a couple goofballs goofing off out there for you. So, but, but that the risk of building a legacy and helping a lot of people, not only the people that I certify, but the people that, that coach, because our, our, our coaches are very successful. Many of them have built, you know, six figure entrepreneurial type of, uh, of, of businesses and they influence each coach. I mean, we have coaches that literally influence thousands of people. So if you got thirty thousand coaches, you could do the math real quick. Mm-hmm. If you know, you you you're we're, we 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 influence well over you know three or four million people a year. So I thought it was worth the risk to help not only give coaches a, a good name to build their business under, but I thought it would be a good idea to uh, the, the the people that they would help. So. I, I finally said, yes, I, I'm going to do it. So I made the decision. But what I found in those that six-month period you're talking about is you just go to your people that know you best and, and, and love you the most and people that have some stake and skin in the game. And I, I, I just ask them openly, you know, talk to me. What, what do you think? And uh, I didn't try to color it or, or, or bend them any certain way. I just really wanted to hear their opinion. And, and after doing that, I came to the conclusion that most of us agreed that it would help me get my legacy. And, it, mm-hmm. and it's just ridiculous now. I mean, mm-hmm. it was, it, it, and, 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 you know, the Mark Cole who oversees the John Maxwell team now, you know, he said, John, he said, we're 30,000, but we're going to a hundred. I mean, he mm-hmm. said, we found, we found a, we found a, a coaching formula that works for people. And, and, uh, and, and so, I'm really glad I made the decision, but I, I think that any decision that's a big one, I think you just you don't make it by yourself. What, what I tell people all the time is bring other people into in, in the process and ask their opinion and, and hear from them and and then make your decision. But make your decision based on everybody's perspective, not just uh, one person's perspective. Amazing. You know, it's interesting. I just kind of have this picture of those six months and I, I see you and I imagine your inner voice is in that inner circle. <laughs> How do you hear that? What's the the quickest way that you can turn the volume up on that that GPS, that internal compass? I love that question uh, because I, th- I think leaders. I spend a lot of time uh, in solitude. I, mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time just weighing and thinking uh, about the different things that that are before me. And, and what I, I, you know, everybody has a different practice. And, and but mine is now I'm a person of faith, so I, I don't want to inject mm-hmm. that in here necessarily. But because I am a person of faith, I, I do have a God factor that that I, I uh, try to hear and, and listen to Him and and uh, try to figure out what His will is in, in these things. But but my practice is very simple. Uh, I just get a a, a, a legal pad. And I uh, draw a line down the middle, and I just begin to put the pros and cons. And uh, I, I spend maybe I don't know maybe a week or two with that list, just filling in the list and, and making sure that I'm not missing anything. And and asking other people, you know, what what what's the downside of this? What's the upside of it? And, and so I, I get my list. Now I don't make my decision based on the length of the list. I may have. Mm-hmm. You know, I may have 17 things that are uh, a downside and have maybe seven things are upside. But but I, I, I don't say, OK, 17 went beat seven. So I, I, I don't do this. But what I do is I, I, I weigh I weigh those items. It's possible the seven things that are 
upsides way much more than the 17 that, that are the downsides. So, so I, I, I do, I go through that kind of a, a reasoning pattern first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so if I get, a, if I get a green light there, then I go to the second one. I, I now get put on my vision cap and I look at what is, and I look at what could be. And I ask myself, for example, if I, if I start this coaching company, what, what does it look like if, you know, and, and back then, to be honest with you, I was thinking 5,000 coaches. I thought, wow, what would happen if I had 5,000 coaches and, and, and how, mm -hmm. how would I train them? But more is, is what, what, what good, what good could 5,000 of us do together? So I began to lay all that out. And, and, uh, and I came to the conclusion that 5,000 coaches could make a major difference in, in their world. And so, and so that was, that, 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 that was, a, that was a green light. And then I, I, I go one more route. And that is I look inside of myself and I say, okay, do I have the bandwidth for this? Do I, am, am I, do I have the time for it? Do I have the capacity for it? Do I have the energy for it? And I just ask myself, you know, half a dozen questions. And if, if I get a yes there, then that's kind of like three green lights. And, and that's basically, you know, push the metal to the, the pedal to the metal and, and, you yeah. know, and, and, you know yeah. and, and take off and go. And that's, that's kind of how I did it. Amazing. So you, what I love is your, you've, you've started to really blend that linear and nonlinear, that spreadsheet type of calculated thought process, as well as the spiritual and the deeper and kind of inner vision. So the pros and cons list, the vision cap, and then really evaluating the bandwidth. And I imagine that includes your trade-offs and how you talk about, you know, trade-offs and that. What was your biggest trade-off in making and in, in green lighting this next, you know, act? Well, I love, I love, hey, Joe, I love your, your phrase trade-off because I use it all the time. I, in fact, I've done a teaching on trade-offs worth making. First of all, I think that every time we come to a major decision, there's a trade-off. And uh, it's, it's never like I made the ma major decision and everything was good and nothing was bad. I gained everything and I lost nothing. I, I don't think that's realistic. And I think that the more successful you are, the more difficult it is to make the trade-offs. And let me explain that. It goes, let's go back to the mm -hmm. Tyler Perry conversation. Tyler Perry doesn't need any more money. He doesn't need any more fame. If he's going to really build a bigger studio, it's because he's doing it for one reason. That is to, to reach more people with his mission. Impact. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when you think of the, you know, when you think of, uh, of a trade-off, uh, you know, in the beginning I was trading off like crazy, working my way up the ladder because I had nothing. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, when, when you basically have very little to give up, it's easy to trade off. You don't have much, but, but when you have a lot, those trade-offs get a lot more difficult. And so I, I, I tell people all the time, the, the more successful that you are and the higher you go, the, the steeper the trade-off is, both in the price that you pay and the return that you receive. So I, 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 you know, I weighed those. The trade-off I had, obviously, at 64, there were a couple trade-offs. One was uh, time. I, if I'm going to do this company, it's going to take away time that I was going to have for myself and my family. So that's a trade-off. Uh, another trade-off I talked about was the risk of uh, reputation. I, I, there wasn't much. Yeah, I, there wasn't much of a risk as far as building the company. It, uh, for 20 years, I've had people come and say, "John, I wish you had a coaching company. I would like to be one of your coaches. I'd like you. I'd like to be certain." So. It wasn't a new idea, and uh, but 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 I had to you know. It's, but but so I, the risk wasn't would it work as much as the the risk of again what happens when we have a goof off out there that just you know. We, and what I didn't realize this was a this was a beautiful surprise to me it, because when when I started the coaching company, there were some thir certain things that I made a decision on that was really good, and one of them was unlike most coaching companies. Once we certified it, once they got into the program and, you know, they paid uh, to be certified, uh, we, weren't going, we were going to then teach them how to build their business, but we weren't going to ask for any kind of a percentage of their business. And that's most coaching companies, they want to, you know, cut off of new business. Nothing at all wrong with that, but, 
But I told the people starting, I said, I don't want to do that. I, I said, you know, I've already been blessed financially. I want, I, they ought to pay a price to get in because it's, it's the certification is worth something. So we just, uh, we established a price, but then I said, let them go about the business and, and, and their profits are theirs. And, and that was really, a, 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 I think one reason we were so successful so quickly is because once they were certified, our greatest desire was just to bless them and, and to help them and, and to equip them and, and kind of fan the flame and be their cheerleader in that whole process. And, 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 and that has, that has really been established and that, that, that has, has really, uh, worked, you know, and, 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 and somebody said, well, you, you don't have to do that. Well, of course it didn't, but. I was having a, a conversation recently with uh, Angela Arntz, who was number three at um, Apple, and she was the CEO of Burberry for mm-hmm. many years. Very successful, and, and she reads my books. In fact, when she was CEO of that company, she called me and wanted some time, so we become friends. And so, anyway, Angela and I are having a conversation very recently, and so I was asking her. I said, "What's the best advice you've ever received?" And, and she said, my father told me something that I stayed with me all my life and it really has worked for me. And, and so I said, well, what did he tell you? And she, she said, he, he told me to, to always give 60 and take 40. Mm. And I, I just love this. And, and she said, he just always told me you give more than you take and life will be good to you. And so when I started the coaching company, I said, okay, I, I, I'll give 60 and take 40. And, um, uh, and away we go, and it really worked, and it resonated with people. And and but but tra- yeah, so I, I had a couple trade offs that I made, but you always make them. But again, the toughest trade offs are the ones you don't have to make because you're no longer trying to make a living. You're already you're you've already got all that. And, and yet, I think those are also the hardest trade offs, but I think they're the biggest returns because now you can do things that compound in, in incredible ways. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Heads up, everyone. Just a quick update on the Renegade Brand Boot Camp. We are open for enrollment, and the dates are listed on the website for the next program. This is the 2020 program, and I am so excited. You can head to renegadebrandbootcamp.com for all the information, and the good news is it's early bird. So if you're interested, even remotely curious, just sign up for the email series because I go through a lot of the details and questions that you might have. I've gathered just through feedback and research what is on most people's minds at this point when they're thinking about entering the program. So just sign up if you're interested. And um, time is of the essence because we are in early bird. There are limited seats. And um, I do give you the opportunity to reach out to me directly with questions too if you go through the the email series. So renegadebrandbootcamp.com is where you will find everything and be able to learn about the experiences that previous graduates, the alumni, have had. And we have an FAQ as well. So head to the website if you want to learn more. Hi, everyone. If you are digging this podcast, please do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It just takes a moment and it means a ton to us. Also, after recording more than 100 episodes, I've created a bit of a cheat sheet on the top five things I've learned from Renegades and how they get from idea to action, from dreaming to doing. I will email you the downloadable PDF when you subscribe to my newsletter. Just head to amyjoemartin.com and click on Connect With Me. And I've heard you say, too, that the moment you stop making trade-offs is the moment you plateau, right? So it's it's good, healthy to be in a situation where you are making those trade-offs. So I would love to change gears here and kind of referring to your most recent book, The Leader's Greatest Return, there was a section that really, really resonated that I'd love to to double down on and, and get some more insight from you on. And that is when you talk about leaders focusing on developing leaders, not recruiting followers. And where I'd love to take this is through 
the lens of of social media. So that's been my swim lane throughout my career. And there's such a hyper focus in our society about growing followings, especially for one one to one coaching. You know, these coaches they're using social communication as a just amazing lever to connect. And they're so focused on on their following. But you go on in the book to give the example about David Ogilvy, which I love as an old ad agency girl, and how he would give his new managers a Russian doll. And the doll, of course, contained the, the five smaller dolls. And he said to them, if each of us hire people who are smaller than we are, we'll become a company of dwarfs. Which is just amazing. So could you talk a little bit about this concept in really through the lens of social media, Twitter, Instagram, you know, everybody's so hyper focused on that vanity metric of ego following. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I think the question is a very appropriate one. So I'll, let me do my best. First of all, social media is amazing and, and what you can do and, and the awareness factor and how quickly you can get a message out. It's we live in incredible, phenomenal times. So um, I, I, I think there's a I think there's a downside to social media, and I think there's an upside to social media. So, but but I really do want to talk to you about developing leaders and and why that's important. Uh, Art Williams is a wonderful friend of mine, and many years ago he started Prime America. And when he when he started to build his team, he said to them, he said uh, to them. I don't promise you that this will be easy, but I do promise you it'll be worthwhile. And when you think of developing leaders, this book is an incredible practical book on how to develop leaders. But I don't promise anybody that reads the book that it'll be easy, but I do promise that it'll be worthwhile. And here's why. First of all, 90% of all leaders, they don't cultivate or develop other leaders. They just have followers. And, and that's okay. Lead, that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And so if you lead, you have people in line. And, and that's just a fact. But what they don't understand is, is that followers are not committed. Followers don't understand how to reproduce themselves. And, and so if you have followers, you add, you, you get some addition into your company, but you don't get any kind of multiplication or compounding. Hmm. But the moment that you develop leaders, the compounding begins. Because, Amy Jo, if you're on my team and I develop you as a leader, you have now influence that grows because you're a leader and you're developing other people. So, you know, all the people you're developing become a part of who I am. And there's a reproduction that's extremely healthy when you develop leaders, it, it, with followers, it's addition, and with leaders, it's multiplication. That's mm. that's why I love the title of the book, The Leader's Greatest Return. What's return. the leader's greatest return? Developing other leaders. But that process takes time because followers, they just get in line. I don't mean that wrong, but I mean, mm. they just get in line. In fact, they're in line sometimes. They're not even sure what's it, what's at the end of it. They're just in line. Mm -hmm. And and it, so, it's, you know, social media can become a very you know, I don't know how many followers you have. And, and I've, you know, I, my, my company's put me out through a lot of that stuff. And, you know, they tell me I have millions of followers. I have no clue, but, but here's what I know. Millions of followers will not give me a high return, but a few thousand leaders hmm. will give me a high return. You know, 30,000 coaches in my company are much more compounding than millions of followers. And I know that. Mm -hmm. In fact, my whole mantra is I add value to leaders who multiply value to others. The multiplication begins at leadership. Mm. It, it's such a great way to explain it. The exponential reach that leaders can offer value through from you versus the, just people coming to you. And well, I think conceptually, too, I, I'm – this question for you, it's kind of a two-part or maybe it's a little less related than at first I thought. But I think about this concept of, of social communication where you learn it on Tuesday and you teach it on Wednesday. <laughs> and you, you've talked before about how many leaders are like travel agents and they want to send people to places they haven't been themselves. And so <laughs> do you see a 
a bit of a disconnect or a, you know, a discrepancy between, you've been at this for decades and you've had a large amount of influence, huge. And now as you're kind of scaling yourself per se, in a way, what do you think about this, this day and age that we're in where I think sometimes it, it feels like people are just trying to teach a little too quick. Maybe they haven't been through it themselves or, and then trying to build well, that following, you know. It's the, <laughs> it's the day of instant results and instant gratification. And, and uh, you know, we, uh, you know, with social media, so much of it is putting your best face forward and and to be honest with you, we all have a downside. And, mm-hmm. and, and social media, we can say what we want to say and present what we want to present. So we don't really present our true self. We we present our best self. I, I, I have a best side. And when I'm on my best side, I'm just pretty awesome. But but I also have a, a, a worse side. And, and when I'm on my worst side, I'm not too awesome at all. And, and I think that authenticity is is so important, and yet I think social media takes it away. I, I think, I think you could present yourself to people on social media that's not really who you are, but that's who you want people to think you are, and and that, that now you're creating a very false, fragile, fleeting culture. It's just a matter of time. As quickly as those people come, those people also go, mm-hmm. and we we have to just understand the the nature and the character characterization that uh, you never know a, a person's level of buy-in until you ask them for some kind of a major commitment and, and then all of a sudden you begin to you begin to know it mm-hmm. and I think that's something that is just often missed and so when it comes to leadership and and, and de- developing leaders we just kind of decided that we would make a commitment to of find people who really wanted to make a difference. When I started off my journey, Amy Jo, I had these four phrases, I want to make a difference with people. And I started off and I said, I'm just going to grab people and make a difference with people. Well, what I found is that it, although it was, a, it was a good thought, what I discovered was not everybody wants to make a difference and not everybody is willing to pay the price. And so when I said, I want to make a difference with people, I, I found that I got a lot of dead weight. And, and so all of a sudden I realized that I needed to continue that phrase and say, I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And I had to, I had to have a way to discover who are those people who really want to make a difference. And what I discovered was share your story, sh- give vision, cast vision, because people say, well, you know, I cast vision to unite all the people. Well, I, I don't think vision unites people. I think it divides people. I think, you want you play out your vision. I think you divide the players from the pretenders. I mean, you know, if I if I say, for example, we're, we're right now committed to transformation of nations through uh, values, teaching, and in, 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 in small groups. This is a major commitment to try to bring transformation to a country. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have we, we're in three countries, and we're in, we only come in if the president of the country invites us in, and and uh, we we've. We're in three countries now. We're going to go to two more countries this year, but we have 22 presidents of countries who have written us letters waiting. They're in the line waiting for us to come. And um, one of the things that we just understand, I mean, so we've got, we, we've got, and, and, and oh, it's so fun. I, I, my coaches go into the countries to train facilitators on how to do these, what we call transformation tables, these small groups. So we'll, we'll, we'll set in, We'll send in a few hundred coaches, and, and in four days, they'll train 20,000 uh, uh, facilitators to do transformation tables. And it's just, it's fabulous. It's just incredible. But what but what I learned very quickly, I mean, this is a perfect example, is, you know, if they want to go help us train, they have to pay their way. They have to, you know, they, we're, we're not giving them anything. We, we get, we, the thing, what we're giving them is a chance to be significant and make a difference and have once in a lifetime opportunities, but you know, there, there's a commitment to calling to that. And, and so what I've discovered, Amy Joe, it's just very simple, just very simple that if you want to go fast, get followers. If you want to go far, get leaders. And mm. that's just the way it works. So good. Oh, such a good point. And that it will resonate, you know, as people are listening and I encourage everyone to really think that through because 
sometimes the the weight and equity we put into our time to grow a following can become a bit hollow. You know, I mean, the, the following can become hollow. So, so you talk so much about how you have to lead yourself first, and you're still a student of personal growth. How do you how do you actually execute that? What does it look like tactically for John Maxwell to be focused and continue his own growth? Well, I love that question, Amy Jo. Um, I remember doing a leadership conference several years ago, and during a break, I'm signing some books, and so this kid comes up to me, and and uh, you know, he says, "Oh, I love what you're doing. I love this conference." And he said, uh, "But, but, uh, but, I'm I'm getting my MBA. I'm not leading anybody yet." And, and so I'm getting all this good stuff, but he said, you know, who, who do I lead? And, mm-hmm. and I looked at it and I, I said, you, you lead yourself first, start with yourself. In fact, if you, if you can't lead yourself, why, well, why should anyone else follow you? I mean, mm-hmm. I, so, so the first person you lead is not others. The first person you lead is yourself. And, you know, when I, lots of times I'll do Q&A in these conferences and people will raise their hand and they'll say, John, uh, what's your greatest challenge as a leader? I said, well, that's very simple. I said, my greatest challenge as a leader is, is leading me. It, it's a challenge I have every day. Uh, it's easy to lead other people. I mean, it's easy to look out at an audience and tell them what to do and where to go and, and then go home. I mean, <laughs> they've got to do all the work. But, but when I lead myself, I've got to, I've got to now – I've got to do these things. And, and it's, you know, it's easier to teach somebody to do right than to do right yourself. And, uh, and yet the power, the, the, what I would call um, the moral authority in leadership, which is much higher than positional authority, the moral authority in leadership is the fact that you're an example. Uh, you know, maybe the greatest words a leader can, you know, share with his or her people is follow me. Because people do what people see. So when, when leaders say, well, how would I teach my people to lead? Well, lead by example. Let them watch you. And when they, you know, what Stanford Research says, I think 89% of what we know we learn visually. Well, that's, that's pretty high. Mm. So being a, the example, uh, being the first to take the step, uh, being the model, it's, it's, it's huge. And, and you referred earlier to you know, a lot of leaders are are, are are like travel agents. Basically, they send people where they've never been themselves. And 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 I tell leaders, you don't want to be a travel agent. You want to be a tour guide. A, a tour guide takes the people with them. I mean, hey, get on the bus with me. Follow me. We're going to go to, to see a museum today that I've been to hundreds of times. You're going to meet people I've known for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It, 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 it's kind of like, stay with me. Stay with me. And, mm-hmm. and I'll make your life better. What we need to be tour guide leaders, not travel agent. And again, I think the travel agent leader goes back to the, the whole social media and the kind of the, the fakiness of it. Uh, and mm-hmm. so anyway, hopefully that's helpful. And yeah. And how do you grow yourself? So in terms of, you know, are you, uh, what are you reading or how do you find your source of, of, growth and, you know, tactically throughout your year, throughout your days? If, if somebody said, John, what is the one secret to where you are today? I would say personal growth. Um, I'm, in fact, I'm known for leadership, but I'm probably most passionate about personal development growth. And when I was in my, in my middle twenties, I sat down with a mentor and one morning at breakfast, he asked me, he said, John, what, what is your plan for personal growth? And, uh, and I said, well, you know, what do you mean? He said, well, I mean, what's your, what, 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 how, how are you developing yourself? And I had no plan for personal growth. And that day he just, my life was changed. He, he looked at me and said, John, he said, um, growth isn't automatic growth. You don't personally get better automatically. Um, it, it's, you know, we get older automatically, but we don't get better automatically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and he said, he said, if you're going to, if you're going to get better, you're going to have to be intentional. And so, uh, I said, wow, I never, I honestly, I never even thought about it. And so I did think about, it. I went to some of my friends and I'd ask them, do, do you have a plan for growth in your life? And, and none of them had any plan for growth. And, and it hit me, uh, 
uh, about three months later that I thought, you know what, something that is so important in people's lives and, and, and they're not intentional at all. They're, they, you know, they're just, they just think if they live another day, they grow because they show up at work or whatever. And so I, uh, I developed a personal growth plan for myself and, uh, Really, I, I didn't know how to grow. So Success Motivational Institute out of Waco, Texas, had a had a goal-setting kit that cost $799. And back then, that's just about a month's salary for me. And so it took me six months to save up to get it. But So I got it, and it taught me how – it gave me a, a, a plan for, for personal growth and goal-setting. And, and I did that, and uh, everything changed. Everything changed. In fact, today – that I have that kit in my office and I it's keep it about 10 feet from where I sit and work. <laughs> and, uh, and I look over at that kit and I tell people I paid $799 for that kit and it's returned millions of dollars to me. <laughs> it's it's it, it, the greatest investment you ever make is the investment in yourself. Mm. And so I got on a personal growth plan. I was, I was, I was signing books at another conference and I had a guy come up to me and said, Johnny says, what's your personal growth plan? So I just real quickly kind of told him and, when I finished, he said, uh, he, he looked at me and he said, well, I, I don't like your plan. <laughs> I laughed. I said, that's okay. I said, what's your plan? He said, well, he said, well I don't have one. I said, well, I like my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so I would tell everybody, I mean, for example, I, I mean, I listen to podcasts. I mean, I mean, this, I mean, you, this is a growth tool for people. Your, your, the, your time with me and your time on, on the podcast and, why not now? I mean, that it's a growth tool for people. And, and, and so many times it's even free. I mean, I have a podcast. I know. And I was We've just going to mention, I love it by the way. And I um, oh, good. appreciate it. Good. I, well, yes. That makes me feel good. You know, we've only been doing it for about seven or eight months, but I think we've, I don't know, we're, I think Mark said we're up to 5 million or something like that. So it's growing good. Oh but, yeah. Uh, Congrats. But anyway, it's just and, and if you you know if your listeners want to get on it, I, I think they just go to what John Maxwell Podcast dot com probably is how they get on it. But 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 the point being, uh, there's all kind of resources available. Here's here's what I, this one one quick story here because this is huge. I'm in my twenties. I hear Earl Nightingale say, "If you'll spend one hour a day on the same subject for five years, you'll become an expert on that subject." And that's when I was just really learning and wanting to become a, a better leader. It, it's when I realized everything rises and falls on leadership. And so when I heard him say that, I said, I'm going to do that because I want to be a, I want to be a, I want to be an expert in leadership. So I said, I want to give one hour a day on the subject of leadership for five years and see what happens to me. So now I'm on a, a growth plan and, mm -hmm. and I start this process and, and I'm kind of like Cape Canaveral. I'm, you know, I got five years of Earl Nightingale. Okay, I got four years left, three years. I'm doing a countdown kind of a deal. And I was probably halfway through that process, just halfway. And I kept asking myself, how long will it take? 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 You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one day, one day I realized I was changing all over my life. I mean, I, my, I, I, learned, I was learning leadership. I I was just growing and changing beautifully. And, and I mean, just one day I just thought, oh my goodness, this one hour a day on the same subject is starting to pay off. And, and well, look at me. And I'm not even the same person I was two and a half years ago. And, and that was the day, Amy Jo, I quit asking the question, how long will it take? And I started asking the question, how far can I go? Mm, sounds good. Oh my <laughs> Good. What a, re what a reframe that is. Yeah. It, you, yeah. It's a huge reframe. Now, here's what's incredible. I'm passionate. I still grow like crazy. I, I, I still have plans for growth and, and, and intentionality. And, 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 and the question, how far can I go? That I started asking at 26, I'm 72, and I'm still asking the same question. Mm. How far can I go? I'm not there yet. I'm still expanding. I'm still getting better, but that's no big deal. I was talking to my dad the other day. He's 98. Ooh, and we, we, were having, we were having lunch, and my dad looked at me. My dad's been an incredible person and a great leader himself. And I looked at my dad, and he said, son, he said, I, I've just been thinking, and, and he's a person of faith. I've been praying. And he said, I, I'm 98, and I, I'm, I'm convinced that my best days are still ahead of me. Oh, that's I thought, amazing. I thought, man. 
I want to be like my dad. My best days are still ahead of me. See, yeah, how far can I go? How far can I go? So I wrote a book about, I don't know, six or seven years ago uh, called The 15 Laws of Growth. And uh, it's a life changer. It's, it's, it's to me, the, it's, quote, the Bible on personal growth. It's, it's just 15 laws that I, I know work. I, I woke up one morning about 3.30. I write early in the morning and uh, put on my robe. And I said, I, I need to write a book on the laws of growth. So I just began to write down the laws of growth in my life, what I've learned about what is just a constant truth about leadership and about personal growth. And by noon, I had written down these laws. I'd written them down. And, and then I wrote the book. And, and it's just a, it's a life changer. So personal growth, yeah, I, you know, I don't even think there's a finish line. I think that, uh, I think that you know, if you're goal-oriented, there's a fishing, uh, finishing line. But if you're growth oriented, there's no finish line, and and I'm growth oriented. Oh, and and last question here, John. What is one lesson that you find yourself learning over and over? I, I don't know if there's one lesson I'm finding myself learning over and over because if you really are on a personal growth track, basically here's the cycle: you learn, you unlearn, and you relearn. And 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 uh, positive change is the result of personal growth. So there are, are lessons that keep being validated in my life. I don't know if I learn them again, mm-hmm. but, but okay. I, I look at them and I see, I see them pop up and I say, Oh, that's, that, that's just a real truth that, you know, it, it worked 10 years ago and it and still works, you know, from now. But, but, but my growth has also growth will take you uh, out of lessons that you've learned because you'll learn uh, uh, better lessons. I call it layered learning. And, and layered learning is the fact that what I learned yesterday becomes foundational for what I, I learned today. Mm-hmm. And, and the more layers of my learning, the more mature I am in my teaching and in my in my thinking. You were talking about a little bit earlier about people who learned, learned something one day and they're teaching it the next day. Mm-hmm. And and again, that's, that's part of, <laughs> you know, being famous and and you know, and, and, and you know, and you know, there's a lot of you know, you know, that fake it till you make it crap. But anyway, the, the, what what I teach people is this: when you learn it, you sit down with others and say, "I'm learning this. Let me share it with you, and let's learn together." And so, I almost immediately take what I'm learning and pass it on. But I don't pass it on as a teacher; I pass it on as a fellow student. And, and and I say here I, I I don't even have a good grasp on this subject yet, but let me tell you, this is this is what I'm learning right now. So let me just tell you what I'm learning. It's not great. It's 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 not profound, but but I want to pass it on to you now, and and then let's learn more about it. And mm-hmm. and I have found that to be a fabulous way to grow myself and grow others without being quote the superstar. That's that's just so profound. Plus it's. You're able to get instant feedback too, and get that feedback loop going. It's amazing, and um, iterate, and iterate. And what are you most excited about right now? Just to wrap things up oh. here, but <laughs> well, I, I, I'm most excited about. Um, I, I've given my life now to values transformation in countries, and we're going to bring it uh, next year to America. We've done it internationally and been very successful with it. And we've been, you know, been trial and error and, and going through the process. And so uh, I'm going to start with my coaches. Uh, and they're going to become catalysts for uh, community transformation. And that includes uh, not only values roundtables for adults, but it also includes curriculum for junior high kids. Mm, we, have, we, have a, we have about 5 million junior high kids going through our curriculum right now. And uh, it's... Uh, three years of values training. I choose good values. I do those values, and then I lead. And uh, it's it's not before school or after school. It's right in the curriculum. So I'm going to take start with the thirty thousand coaches, and I'm going to say, okay, it's time for us to go make a difference in in our community. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to give them the resources they need, and the, you know the training they need, and and we'll start off with them and and do some transformation in our country. And I think it's going to be pretty huge. And then, uh, as it catches on in the community, we'll have other people obviously, uh, you know, become a part of it. But 
you know, I, I think I was created to help people live a better life, uh, a changed, positive, changed life. I, I think that's what I'm here for. And so I'm very excited. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm very excited about uh, I I've got a lot of things to accomplish. We got countries to help transform. We got communities in America to help transform. And I believe that as long as your life is as you're, as you're alive, you're still fulfilling your purpose. So I, I you know, I told God the other day, you know, you're going to have to let me let me live to be a hundred. I got a lot of stuff yet to do. <laughs> so here. more to so, do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So, you know, you can't take me yet. Don't you're, take me yet. So you're anyway, investing I'm, I'm, in your I'm, legacy. I'm loving my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm loving my life, and I'm loving. Um, my coaches and I'm just, I'm just, just, we're just, I'm, it's amazing. I'm 72 and I'm, I'm in my best days and I'm still climbing. And that's, that's a good thing. That's amazing. And this has been a career highlight of mine to speak with you, John, and really just learn firsthand and be able to share everything with, with our listeners. So thank you for the important work you're doing, as well as for sharing your wisdom and time with us. I'm very grateful. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? <laughs> <laughs>